This is Relationship Truth Unfiltered, a podcast that ditches destructive traditions and delves into real biblical teaching about relationships. Welcome, I'm Julie Sedenko here with Dee, a beautiful woman who was born and raised in Ecuador and grew up learning about God. Dee came to the U.S. at 15, ultimately marrying a pastor and having three children. And while she's enjoyed so much of her life serving the Lord, raising her kids, even playing bass guitar, Dee has endured a very destructive marriage. Dee, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here and to share a little bit of what God has done in my life. Wonderful. Now, your husband broke a vow he made to you. Can you share what happened? Yes. Um, so about two years ago, um, he came up to me. It was just a regular Saturday. Um, and he just came up and confessed that he had been unfaithful. It was very shocking, to say the least. There were no, you had no idea at all. I had no clues whatsoever. No wow. idea. Um, even during that year, actually, it was coming out of COVID. And we had a lot of marriages within our church that were struggling, right? I sure. think, you know, a lot of things came up. And so we decided to, instead of counsel one-on-one, -on -one, all these marriages, we were going to do this Facebook live kind of marriage counseling, uh, you know, thing. Um, and so we were doing that um, while the infidelity was happening. So therefore, I, you know, wow. it was, yeah, it was completely shock to me. Um, and so I remember just being numb uh, as soon as he mentioned it. And he didn't say much other than, you know, this happened. And kind of like the reason why I'm telling you is because the woman's husband found out. And so instead of you finding out a different way, I wanted to be the one to let you know. Oh, so this wasn't God convicted me and I feel horrible. Well, he would put it that way. Um, he would put it away because he would say, you know, another man in my situation wouldn't even do that. Would just let it, you know, let you find out. And I'm like, mm, no, I think you told me just because the man found out and you didn't know what was going to happen. Right. Yeah. Um, but at the time it was just a complete shock. And, um, he said, are you going to leave me? Like those were kind of like the only things he did not say, you know, I'm sorry, forgive me. He literally just said, are you going to leave me? And I said, so, no. I, so, so there was, I'm sorry, yeah. there was no care at all no. as to how you were feeling, how this was impacting you. It, it was basically, how is this going to impact me now? Yeah. Are you going to leave me? So it was still all about him. Is Correct. that right? Correct. Wow. And, and I just said, I, I don't want to talk about that right now. I need a moment to myself. He actually did leave the room and I just cried, laid in bed for the rest of the day. I cannot tell you what I did the rest of the day other sure. than just lay down and cried. And this is about two, three weeks before our 15th wedding anniversary. Oh my gosh. Can you tell me, do you remember just the things that were running through your mind in that moment. And as you laid on that bed, I mean, what were you thinking? I wasn't good enough. Um, I couldn't believe that it was the person that he um, mentioned. Uh, I had no idea. I mean, this woman was married. This woman had a, a baby. Like so you knew her? From church. She was in our worship team. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Wow. wow. And, uh, and she had been in my house that week because um, we were, again, cordial. She was not a friend of mine, but she was a friend of my then husband. And uh, Yeah, pretty good friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's tacky, but I mean, yeah. wow. Yeah. And so, um, and so I just, I, again... Lots of things going through my mind. I, I could not believe that we had gotten to that point. And right away, within, I would say, the next two days, he started just pressing the whole forgiveness issue onto me. Um, 
he would say things like, if you're really a Christian woman, then you should forgive her and I should be okay being friends with her. Um, oh, he still wanted you to be friends with her. Okay. So, um, yes. wow. Let's just talk about how many women are friends with the woman that their husband slept with. Right. right. Uh, and, and, but see, wow. the, the interesting thing here uh, is that he went and talked to the woman's husband and um, he was very forgiving and he was okay with her, uh, with his wife hanging out with my husband. He was. Yes. And this, and that's when I found out that this was not her first offense um, in their marriage. And so I was like, and so constantly he would say, you need to be more like him. Like if he's okay with me hanging out with her, why aren't you okay? And this entered like something very tricky for me, right? Because I want to please God and I, I know how much he's forgiven me. So I want to extend the same forgiveness to everybody regardless. But I just knew that this is not, this was not healthy for me. Like I did not want my husband hanging out with his affair partner. I mean, of course you wouldn't. And I'm sorry that that husband, he had some issues if he was willing to do this, not just once, but over and over again, allowing his wife to be with other men and yeah. just re continuing to forgive and enable that type of egregious sin yes uh then he obviously has some issues not you uh now i know that. i mean they both do obviously <laughs> i mean she had issues yeah. my goodness um yeah. so so his behavior after telling you about this affair was to demand forgiveness was to know whether his life was going to change any yes whether I was going to tell anybody, whether you were going to tell anybody, what, what did you decide to do after this? Yeah. So at that time I was wrestling with, again, the voice, his voice in my head of forgiveness, forgiveness. And then, um, as a pastor wife, and maybe this was, uh, self-imposed, but I felt the weight of the church upon my shoulders. Yeah. Because if you tell, yeah, you lose everything, the church, you lose your income, you lose, I mean, there is some practical side to this, but I also think, what was it like to watch him get up and preach? Awful. Absolutely awful. So, and mind you, she's still singing. Because, so she's on the worship team. Because he would say, well, if, if, if I'm okay preaching, why can't she sing? Right. And so it was, it was a very tough situation to get to church with my children, see him up there singing with her and then preaching because he did a little bit of singing as well. Gee, oh and my so goodness. It was just, I was, I felt like I was dying inside week after week and without telling anybody, right? Nobody knows. And also just making sure that nobody knows uh, within our, our circle. And it came to a point where the friendship became a little more intense, if, if you would call it, to where they started texting again, to where they started seeing each other two, three times a week. Oh, but it's okay because the husband's at the house. So I should be okay because the husband is there, right? Okay, let's just stop and say that's not what repentance looks like. Correct. And, you know, sorry is something that you can see. Yeah. So you weren't seeing that he was sorry in any way, shape or form. Correct. I wasn't seeing, but I also couldn't put it into words. I was just yeah. feeling it in my body. Um, and he, uh, and so, and, and during this time is where I reach the darkest time uh, mm -hmm. during this situation, because I started thinking, well, maybe, if I wasn't alive, right, if I wasn't here, then he could just continue being a pastor, doing whatever he wants, and it would just take me out of the equation. You uh, really were beginning to think this. Yes, I was. 
And it wasn't until one time I was driving and I, I was thinking about it. And I said, you know, like, it, it, no one needs to know what happened. And he can just, you know, he just won't have a wife. He'll be, you know, and do whatever he wants and find whoever he wants. And then I got to, and the children. And as soon as I said that, I said, oh, no, 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 like, no. no my kids are not going to be okay with this. God is not okay with this. I need help. You know, Dee, I, I just want to share this really quickly because if there's somebody in a similar situation right now and they're struggling with what to do, I had a married missionary when I was a single person come up to me and basically, you know, he let me know that he wanted to have an affair with me. Mm. And I was in shock and told him absolutely not. And I didn't know what to do. And I ultimately went to my pastor and said, what do I do? Because it was the same thing. If I go, this man's a missionary and his wife, his family could be destroyed and his ministry and their income and everything. I just didn't know what to do. So I went to my pastor and he did not skip a beat. Mm. And he said, absolutely. You turn him in because He's going to bring reproach on the word. Mm, yeah. And so that just instantaneously made it so clear. And I did turn him in and he admitted it. And I, I don't even know what happened because I didn't get involved. Mm -hmm. But we don't want somebody to bring reproach on the word. And that matters. Yeah. And, you know, that's, of course, not to say anything about what you were doing, but look at what his sin was doing to you. Right, right. And so when I when I decided, OK, it's time, like I need help, I the Lord just placed a friend in my heart. Um, she is older, older, older than me, and she does not live uh, close by or she was not living close by at the time. And I said, I just need to talk to somebody like I just need to open up my my heart to you and I would love your advice. Um, and I am so grateful that I did that phone call because my concern was primarily for the church at the time. And she shared the verse with me on um, that's in Matthew 16, 18, um, that it says, you know, it, it is my church like this is all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Right. And so she's like, this is not your church. This yes. is Jesus's church. You did not do anything wrong. He did. He is yes. the one that will ultimately be destroying this, but even his sin cannot destroy the church. Like the Lord is going to take care of it. And th just even listening to that verse and hearing her, just took the whole weight of yes off my shoulder. Isn't it amazing when we have those kind of people and it can be the most simple thing. And it's like, well, of course, but we need that at that time with all of those emotions and the thoughts and the everything racing through your head. And uh, thank God that you had her. Yes. I am so grateful. And so right after that, now that I'm like, okay, I don't have to think about the church. I need to put the church aside. Now I need to think about, myself and what my body's feeling and what his actions are causing uh, me and or what I'm allowing uh, his actions to to do to me. And so I saw a counselor, I which again, the grace of God, she was a pastor's wife, too. Hmm. And um, so in our first session, I kind of explained to her what roughly I explained to you. And she says, well, what is your hope? What do you want to gain from our sessions? And I said, I just want uh, clarity. I want, again, I brought it back to, I would like to forgive. I would like, I would like for it to be real. I would like for the forgiveness to be real. And then she said something that changed my, the trajectory completely because she said, what I want for you out of this session is that whether you decide to stay or go, that you do it in a godly way. Mm -hmm. And I said, wait, I have a choice. Like right. I can actually, that had not crossed my mind at all. So I you mean, literally did not think that you could divorce him. Not, no. I mean, you know it and you hear it that adultery is grounds for divorce, but that was not something I thought about throughout all of that. Wow. Yes. 
what it what was that feeling like of not having a choice of feeling like you like I was just gonna live like this for the rest of my life um and I was just gonna have to deal with it so after hearing that how did your thinking change how did your life change tremendously so I started uh listening to podcasts Mm -hmm. and actually that is how I found about Leslie Mm -hmm. I was uh at my desk I work from home and so I was uh, you know sometimes I listen to podcasts as I'm I'm doing some work and it was uh Lisa Turker's podcast yes yes good friend of our ministry yes and she had Leslie on on there as well At the time, my husband had just entered the room and I often listen to to Lisa and he would say, oh, there you go again, listening to that woman who's divorced. You know, is that how you want to end up? He would constantly just say that to me. Did he ever ask himself that? No. When he was taking his clothes off with another woman? I'm sorry. And really? So, yeah. And so then Leslie came on. And one of the things that she said was that she had been married for 40 something years. Right. And so when he came in the room and he heard that I was listening to the podcast again, he goes, so there you go again, listening to the, I said, this is a different woman and she has been married for over 40 years. Now, what do you have to say? And he said nothing. And so that those things that I've learned through what uh, Lisa's experience and the things that Leslie mentioned, it was eye opening. Like I had a choice. My marriage is not more valuable than myself. Yeah. Um, I, the, the partnerships should be equal. My feelings matter. If he's really wanting to repair the relationship that he broke, There were things that I needed to see, the fruit of repentance that, uh, unfortunately, I never saw, I never felt. Um, And, you know, to this day, I'm still to blame for the dissolution of the church because eventually I made the choice to speak to our leaders. And I did not mention the sin or the person. But I did say that I was no longer going to be a part of the church. Let me tell you, making myself strong enough or or finding the strength in Christ to get to do that, that was huge for me. Um, And but I am just so thankful that that I was able to do that. And so everybody took it well. They actually um, just provided a lot of encouragement and a lot of words of, you know, we love you. We've seen what you've done. Uh, we're sorry that you're going through this. Hopefully you guys can just work through this. And so you did, you did tell them then about. I said there was sin and there was unrepentance. Okay. I did say that. I did not name the sin or the person. And one other thing, his behavior, he was still demanding that you have sex with him. Oh yeah. 100%. Yes. And, and, and it's the whole submission thing. I cannot deny myself to him. Um, and so as I was getting a little bit stronger in, in, in clarity, really, of what was happening, I started learning about boundaries and, you know, picked up the book of uh, good boundaries and goodbyes and learned a lot. Uh, and, and now how did he respond when now, you decided to leave the church? Uh, so th- the thing is that he made a mess of it all. Um, right after I spoke with the leadership, he lost it, uh, pretty much on them. Uh, they came up with an idea of why don't you take six months off, work on your marriage, kind of be behind the scenes as you're working in your marriage, but, you know, take the time. And then maybe when you guys are good, then you can come back. And his answer was, which it's so shocking to all of us to this day. And I, um, I do want to say I was not there. This was told to me afterwards. And mm-hmm. so I am not sure um, of all the little details. But he did say he would do that only if that woman's husband stayed as a director because he trusted in him. And so at this point, the leadership already thought it was a little iffy. And they said, absolutely not. Like that family will need to be removed from the church. They need to find a different church and you need to focus on your marriage. And he said no. And then it began the whole dissolution of the church, 
just he did not want to give up um, the leadership and we didn't have another pastor. He was the only pastor. He was not accountable to anybody at this time. And uh, some of the church members stayed together. And by the grace of God right now, they're actually doing well and they have a new pastor and a few other members just found different churches to go to. Mm. So did you stay living in the home after you left the church? Um, Yes, I stayed living in the home and it just became very toxic, very destructive because again, he was still um, not owning up to what his actions cost. And he would always try to turn it on. Oh, but you weren't a perfect wife. Always wanted to, you know, our marriage was not that great. And whether we want it or not, like that really eats at you, right? Like I remember, I remember thinking, oh my goodness, but yeah, I mean, that's true. I, w- I wasn't perfect, but I also like, is, is being perfect the requirement for you to not go sleep with someone else? Right. And I was like, come on. And, and then in my mind, I was like, well, you weren't perfect either. Yet I did not go out and exactly else, right? right? Like, and, um, and so I, I kind of wrestled with that for a little while. And then um, it just so happened that one day he went, I don't know, somewhere I I can't remember, but this is late at night and she was there. And so they were there together. And that just broke me completely. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, this, this is not a repentant man in any way, shape or form. Yeah. And so I called, um, I had not talked to any pastors at this point. I had, I did talk to the church and I had my counselor and I had Uh, my friend that I had phoned. But at this point, I said, I need this man out of my house. Like Mm -hmm. I need him out of the house. And I know that our church members would not do that for me. Um, I, you know, they they still had that respect for him. um, Any male and I, I am by myself, my whole family's back in Ecuador, you know, my uncles, like I, I felt truly like alone in this Mm. and powerless. I think that's that's the most accurate uh, feeling that I was having at the time. And so I called this pastor and he said, oh, I'll come over tomorrow. Like, and, you know, we can talk about it. He had no idea what was going on. And so uh, actually two of them showed up and we sat at, at, our, at my table and I explained to them what was happening. He had left. Uh, remember, I told you the night before he had been with this woman. He did not show up at the house at all, all night. Oh, I wonder where he was. And as we're talking with the pastor, the pastor's like, oh, you know, I tried calling him. He's not answering. Um, I guess I'll just try to reach out to him later on. And as soon as he says that, in he walks through the door. And so he sat down and it was the first time that I felt validated in my feelings. Like I wasn't crazy, right? Because yeah. here's two men um, that are able to see what I have been experiencing. And so the older uh, pastor said, you need to leave. Like you need to leave and uh, you need to seek God, return to God, return to your wife and figure it out. At this point, he said he was not sure um, about, you know, God and all these things. And that those people, that family were like the only friends that he's had. Um, And so that if he was to leave the house and he would have no place to go, but to them, to the pastor said, really, like you can come, you can live with so many people uh, for a little while. And so the pastor found him a place and that night he left the house. And so where did he go? The the pastor found him just an older gentleman that lived himself. And so he stayed there. Um, And so this was about four months long. And he would come see the children every once in a while uh, and just spend time with them for a little bit and just kind of be present. But he focused a lot on his work at this time because he had gone from being a pastor to now working in construction. And so he was focusing on that. So going back to the Lisa Turkers podcast, when you heard of Leslie and were introduced to Conquer, did you eventually join Conquer? Yes. So um, I 
so first of all, like her impression of just the way he speaks, she speaks and the clarity in her right. boldness um, and how I, something I've always wanted to, or, or something that I always strive to is to not uh, deviate from the scriptures, right? And I found that everything she was saying was just backed by scriptures. It was just being seen in a different light it, to me in the circumstance. And so I heard Conquer was starting, you know, there's this program, Conquer, and I know Lisa was saying, oh, I'm like an honorary member of this uh, program. And, Very much, yes. And I said, what is this? You know, what is this Conquer thing? And so I did a little bit of research. And again, it was so much clarity from the Lord. Like I, I see this as a gift from God because mm -hmm. I, at this point, I did not know what to do. Um, I did not know what was next. And when Conquer came, I was like, this is it. This is what the Lord has for me specifically and I'm going to join. And so I decided to join Conquer. Tell me what that was like, that experience. Now, at this point, your husband has moved out of the house and you're going through some of this curriculum and your eyes are really being opened. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I think the repentance was something that was very like a big aha moment to where I did yeah. not see these things. I, he can say that he wants his family back all he wants, but his actions show something different. Exactly. And yeah. I think just being able to make that um, statement, like to stand courageously in the truth, that has been like my biggest takeaway from core and um, just understanding that and and just so for people that don't know oh, core yeah. is, a, is it one of the teachings in conquer and c stands for being courageously committed right. to the truth yeah. and that basically means what it, it was twofold right one is like the truth of god in the bible and who he says i am and that my worth is found in him uh, but also the truth of my circumstances and the truth of his actions and my reality as it was, right? Um, because I, I, I would have loved for him to just run back to God and run to me and run to the kids, but the yeah. reality was something different. The and that's a very hard thing to face. And there, there's so many women that don't face it and they kind of live in pretend land that well, I'll drag him to this counselor or we'll do this and, and trying to manage him, manage the situation and force something that unfortunately isn't in his heart. Correct. And let me tell you something uh, else that I learned a lot and from the support group as well. Um, once he kind of saw that I was serious about, you know, leaving or separating and all of that, he said, okay, fine, we can do counseling. Mind you, this is something that I had asked right after the affair. And he did not believe in counseling. He doesn't believe in accountability. And those are the things that he said, right? And he didn't do it. He didn't want to do it. Um, it was kind of like, just trust me. I got this. I'll figure it out. And and wow, my, my gosh. And my words were, no, I'm no longer going to take that. Like, we need a third party involved if we are going to restore this. And so uh, we found a counselor locally, locally. Um, I wanted a man, but, uh, like something inside of me kept saying, I wanted to be a male counselor. Because um, you thought that that was what he might listen to, right? Yeah, 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 possibly. But he actually ended up choosing a woman. Um, she has a lot of experience. And so I said, okay, well, let's give it a try. And I, yeah, I, um, I think she's great. At what, I mean, I'm sure she's great at what she does, but it's definitely a different set of skills, which I now know, thanks to Leslie mm -hmm. and, and the program, because uh, she did not see anything wrong with him being friends with the husband. And uh, she, in fact, had said that there are marriages that go through infidelity where the affair partner is a co-worker and the person can't just quit. And so the wife... Yes, they can. And so the wife needs to just work through it and find healing and forget, you know, and, and then she, the next step was, she's like, I feel like you guys are just not friends anymore. And so I want you to rebuild that. And inside of me, everything was like, I don't 
want to be friends with this guy. Like what? But I said, I, I said yes to this. Right. So I'm going to try. So let's, let's go. So she gave us a binder and we had to write down some things and we had to kind of spend time with each other once a week. But see, this, this is what you're telling me. I think is that what this woman was doing was treating your situation as though it was just normal marital problems. Correct. And mm -hmm. yeah, with normal, with a normal marriage, that's not destructive. We, we still go through issues and right. so rebuilding that friendship or dealing with these issues is the way to go. That's great. But this was a very destructive marriage and she was not dealing head on with the sin, Correct. not just the affair, but his sin against you Correct. and everything else. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and even the, the following session, we needed to show up with our binders and the work that we had done. And I remember saying, I am not going to ask him. I'm not going to say, did you do your homework? Because I mean, he's an adult and if he really wanted to, then, you know, he would. Exactly. And right before the session and probably the last session that, that we had, he had lost his binder and he had not done his homework. And that was another aha moment for me. This is everything. Yeah. Where I'm like, I have my binder to this day is up there with the work that I did. Right. And so it's like, because it was, that shows me or that showed me that it was not important. D, what did that feel like to you? Like everything that he had said up to the point, it was a lie that I never meant anything to him, that I don't mean anything to him at that, in that particular point that I wasn't worth him pursuing anymore. And that is so painful. I am so sorry. Yeah, it was. And, and, you know, you are a beautiful woman. Thank you. You know what I mean? So it's like these affairs and this, this, it has nothing to do with whether you're good enough or pretty enough or any, any of that. This is 100% yeah. his issue, mm -hmm. you know, and not that if you weren't beautiful, that right. somehow that would give him a reason. I'm just saying that. A lot of times women will tell themselves, well, I, I wasn't pretty enough or I wasn't yeah. anything. I mean, girl, you're pretty enough. You know what I mean? You, you've, you love the Lord. You were faithful to him. You were faithful to your kids. There's nothing, nothing that you did. Right. And I had to really stand firm in that truth. Thanks to Conquer, because I, you, I hear, I heard it so much that, you know, you weren't the perfect wife or you didn't do certain things or you didn't meet some of my needs or you, and you start to believe those lies. Right. And so it's like, wait a second, like I have to, so we have to separate this. Right. Well, maybe, maybe you didn't meet some of his needs. Right. So how are you going to deal with that? Having an affair? Right. And why didn't you bring it up? Right. It's like, it's just, it's about getting to the point of clarity to where yes um yes that happened yes you know i'm sure you know there were needs that weren't being met but you never brought it up you should have brought it up we should have talked about it that's where counseling would have been super helpful yeah that's uh, what back when the, you know the rebuilding yeah. friendship route may yeah. may have worked yeah. i don't know but but women who are hearing this and asking themselves if it was somehow your fault for you know, any number of reasons, the answer is no. Absolutely. It's One, no. And you need to let go of that guilt. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the, and the shame of it all, because um, I would tell you, I, right after that, so there's, you know, no church for us to go to the kids. I, I'm just like, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do, how, what's next. Right. Yeah. For me. And I found a, a, a church, a local a church here locally. And Again, another gift from the Lord, because not many women have pastors that are supportive um, in general, right? They, they would tell you to just, unfortunately, they just tell you to just stay and forgive. And if he's already confessed, then he's repented. I have heard friends that mm -hmm. the pastors have said that, even though there is no fruit of repentance, right? Words don't equal repentance. Yeah. The word sorry is worthless if it's not followed up by actions, if it's not followed up by the fruit of repentance. That's right. And so if you have a counselor that's telling you, well, he said he's sorry, that's bad counsel. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And so I will say that if, if there's another woman listening to this and, and she's experiencing this, 
um, do not isolate, like find a place, um, do not, like I, I understand what it feels like to lose your church or, or to not be able to go and worship with the people that you've worked so hard with and for, um, but there is a community out there for you. You need community. Um, do not believe uh, the lies from the enemy because, you know, the enemy starts attacking to, oh, but you were the pastor's wife, you know, or people are going to be like, what are you going to do now? Like, who are you now? Like, what is your identity? And, and uh, what, what does that say about you that your husband, who's a pastor, cheated on you, right? And all these things are just lies from the enemy. Like, we were not created to be by ourselves, even in the middle of hardship. And so especially I, in the middle of hardship, especially in the middle of hardship. And so I started going to church, but I would just go in and out. Right. I would go in and it's like, I don't want to meet anybody. I don't want to know who the pastor is. I, I just want to go in and out. And I actually did that for a little, maybe a month or so until there was uh, the campus pastor who just saw me there. He's like, hey, I've seen you coming in and out, but who are you kind of thing? And uh, so there started a beautiful just um, friendship with him and his wife. They have been just amazing. What a, a wonderful team they are and so supportive in the middle of this. And they were able to see through my husband's actions um, so right away. We even had a few meetings with him to where to the to the point. Let me just say to the point where my kid's father hates my pastor um, <laughs> because uh. he brought up the whole sex situation, right? Because he would say, well, if she really wanted to reconcile, even if we're separated, she should at least do that. And my pastor said, mm, I don't think so, because how do you expect her to submit to you, but you're not submitting to her? Like this works both ways. Amen. And you're not even submitting to God. Like, who are you being accountable to? Who are you? And he stormed out of there. Like He did. Wow. And um, I also know he, my pastor, had another very straightforward, hard conversation with him after that. Um, but so all that to say, the Lord really took care of me and the kids during the season, guiding us through the right to the right place. Um, we started serving, uh, not not right away, but little by little, um, yeah. as I as I felt a little more comfortable, because I was still wrestling with with that. Of course, you were. Yeah, that's yeah. That's okay. And so um, the bass thing was also very interesting. So I play bass guitar on and off, and I, I absolutely love worshiping God in, in that way. And somehow my husband found out, and he started saying, I can't believe they're going to let a woman up there on stage who's actively walking away from her marriage. Um, and but he was okay with a woman being on stage who was having an affair with the pastor. Okay. Yep. And okay. he goes, you're not even good enough to, to play there, you know, and just all these things that I needed to replace with the truth. Right. And yes. I, and I needed that also support from my pastor to say, Hey, like I was there, like I saw it happening. You're okay. As long as you continue to do, um, to lean into God, continue to do what you need to do. You're fine. Like, Thank God for good pastors. Oh, yes. Amen. He, he's been amazing. Um, and so, yeah. And so it's been great. It's been great. It took a little bit of time, but also just kind of returning to, I have always served the Lord since I was little. My grandfather was a pastor for over 67 years. So I've always been around wow. ministry. And I think just not being able to do it because of the shame of the guilt that I was feeling, I really needed to find strength. And I think that's what conquer gave me strength and clarity. I, I love that clarity part yes. of it. Like I can still do that. Um, I know I wasn't perfect, but in the breaking of the vow, like that was not on me. I did not no. do that. Um, and there was never ownership. There was never a fruit of repentance on the other side. And so I needed to move forward in what I, in the way that I want to serve the Lord and ultimately, the way that I want to be 
just a woman of God, right? A godly, yes. a godly mom, a godly friend, and just stop trying to make choices for him or um, stop letting his actions control my emotions. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, that's so good. And it's so easy to do, isn't it? It is. Especially when he says such cruel things, like you're not good enough. My goodness. Dee, what were some of the other big lessons that you learned as you began to grow stronger? And you're now in the process of filing for divorce. Is that right? Correct. Yes. Um, so I think the, 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 the best thing was the choices, right? This was my choice uh, to make and just kind of take ownership of what do I want for my life? I know Leslie uh, mentions pretty often, though, no? we're, we're dancing and the person stepping on your toes. What do you do? And so I decided to remove myself from being stepped on. Change the dance. Change yes. the dance for not just my sake, but for my kids' sake, too. I wanted to make sure that they understood that this was not okay. It's um, not okay. That it's not okay. And also that no matter what, God is faithful. And he has shown himself to be faithful throughout all of this as I am taking one step at a time. And, um, and I have learned that let's say that this was the wrong choice. I don't, I don't believe it is. I, I believe wholeheartedly that this was the right choice. But even if it was the wrong choice, he was still going with me. And he yes. was going to redirect my path regardless. And so I think just learning that I can take control of my life and that I am worth it. I think that is the huge improvement that I, I have had in my life. I am worth it of being respected, um, of being loved and cared for. Um, because God says so. Oh, that's so good, Dee. And I can just hear and see the confidence in your voice and your face and everything. You, you seem to be in such a good, healthy place. Yeah. Even though the circumstances that you're living in are not what you would have chosen. Yes, not at all. I think they're the one of the key things uh, when it comes to walking in this valley is the the support that you have. And I just been so blessed by the church, the pastor, by conquer. Just it's such a such a great feeling when I have I experience something or he sends me a crazy text and I put it out there for my conquer sisters to give me advice. And most of them it's like, oh I went through the exact same thing. Let me yeah. tell you how I handle it. That is huge if you're out there wondering uh, if you should join or not and it and you're going through something very destructive i urge you to do it because just the value that you find in the in the uh monthly calls as well but the support group that you find in these women yeah. is, it's priceless it is uh, it's amazing it's, it's amazing i even when i went through that whole counseling situation uh, so many women will come out and say, yes, like I went through the exact same thing. Um, it just doesn't work because they don't know how to handle this kind of situations, right? They're just not equipped for right. something like that. And so, um, so yeah, it just gives you a lot of support, a lot of experience from other women that are beyond, you know, where you are right now that are far ahead and so it's great. It's just great. And you're also that for someone else who's coming behind, which is yes. part of the reason why I am so glad that I get to the opportunity to kind of share my story. Because if there's another pastor's wife there experiencing something mm -hmm. very similar, I want you to know that there, you're not alone, that there is support out there, um, that Conquer is a great place to start. And to not isolate, just find a place. There are churches out there with great men of God who are yes. um, trying to lean into the word and, and who care, who will ultimately care for you and your children as well. One more question, Dee. Have you been able to forgive? I have. I, I understand now that there are layers to forgiveness. And so I have been in that forgiveness uh, journey, but I have absolutely 
I know that sometimes we confuse that with reconciliation. Yes. And so it's like, oh, since they're not back together, then she didn't forgive. No, I don't hold that accountable anymore. I have been able to release that to the Lord. Uh, but I also understand and stand in the truth that just because I forgave him and her and things like that doesn't mean that we are going to get back together because there needs to be actions. There needs to be fruit of repentance in order for me to do that. And that's something I did not see. That is so wonderful. And that's that's why I asked you, because I could tell just from your countenance that you've forgiven, that you're not harboring this anger and bitterness but I do want people to hear that, that forgiveness can happen without reconciling and living with an abusive, destructive person. Yeah. And uh, they, they are not one in the same. Mm -hmm. So do you just, if there was one piece of advice that I think you've given it, but if there was, is there anything else that you would want to say to somebody who's listening today? I would just say, stay close to God. I don't know where I would be um, right now without God. And when we are going through the infidelity and particularly at the beginning, you start having all these thoughts of revenge or I could do that too. Or I could, you know, what if I did this or what if I did that? There's so many things that run through your head um, and even just seeking validation, right? Because whether we want it or not, it's, it's an attack to our self-esteem. I wasn't good enough. And so it's like, a, you can... Take the wrong path if you do not stay close to God. So for me, that came in the form of finding a new church, a church that I had never been to, a church where no one knew who I was, but just I did not want to get up you know, from bed. I did not want to take a shower. I did not want to get dressed and go to church, but just making the effort and dragging myself there, knowing that this is a safe place because I'm going to be safe with God no matter what, whether... I, I did not know at this point what the decisions, what the what the end game was going to look like. But what I did know was that God cared for me and that he loved me and that he was hurting for me as well. And so I needed to just stay close to him in order for my life to bring glory to him. I know we all know Psalm 23, but I made Psalm 23, 3, my verse where it says he renews my strength. He guides me along right path, bringing honor to his name. And so that is my life, what my life should be about. That is what your life should be about, just bringing honor to his name. And how am I going to be able to do that is by staying close to him because he is the one that's going to guide me in the right path. I don't have anything to add to that. My goodness. Thank you, Dee, so much for sharing this story of pain, but encouragement. It really is. And, and it's so good to see that even in the midst of a divorce, you can stay strong in the Lord. You can stay strong and, and clear in your decisions and uh, be okay. Yeah, you will be okay. Thank you, Dee. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Relationship Truth Unfiltered. If you need clarity on whether your marriage is difficult, disappointing, or destructive, go to lesliebernick.com forward slash start for Leslie's free quick start guide. It's totally private and will help you get clear on your next step. Again, that's lesliebernick.com forward slash start. Until next time, may God bless all of your relationships with him, with yourself, and with others.